What is going on, everyone? Welcome back to Behind the Arc Basketball on YouTube. So, unfortunately, the 2020 NCAA tournament was canceled last month due to the rapid spread throughout the U.S. of COVID-19. But in today's video, I'm going to talk about the top 10 college basketball teams that are most likely to return to the 2021 NCAA tournament. These teams probably wouldn't have made it into the 2020 NCAA tournament if it had actually had taken place this year. Now, hopefully the 2021 NCAA tournament actually happens, which means we all have to do our part to stop the spread and socially distance, which means stay six feet away from others, wash our hands, and if we do these things and also stay away from others, we should be able to get a tournament back, hopefully, and fans there at the games for 2021. That would be absolutely awesome if we can get a March Madness tournament for 2021. But the 10 teams I'll be talking about today were either out of contention already to make the 2020 NCAA tournament if it actually happened, or they were on the outside of the bubble looking in during the last official day of college basketball when the conference tournaments took place and then they were called off. So I would have counted all the locks into the bracket with the top seeds, which would have included most likely Kansas, Gonzaga, Baylor, and Dayton, would have probably all been number one seeds, and then the number two seeds, the number three seeds, number four seeds, number five seeds, and then so on after that, along with the mid-major automatic qualifiers who had already won their conference tournaments, and then the at-large bids to fill out the fields, and then also the bubble teams who would have made it in, in my opinion, for the 2020 tournament. Teams in the bubble such as UCLA, Cincinnati, Richmond, Texas, North Carolina State, and Stanford. So, the 10 teams I'll be talking about today are teams which I thought would have missed the 2020 NCAA tournament if the tournament had actually happened, or these teams already had lost in their conference tournament, so they wouldn't even have been eligible to compete in the 2020 NCAA tournament. So, I'm going to go in order here of the least likely at number 10 all the way to the most likely at number one on my list of teams who should be much improved for next season to make the jump to the 2021 NCAA tournament. Now, teams that just missed the cut for my top 10 list include these teams right here. The SMU Mustangs, the Alabama Crimson Tide, the Missouri Tigers, the Utah Utes, and the South Carolina Gamecocks. Those teams right there just missed the cut to be my top 10 list. Now, we're going to get to the top 10. We got quite a bit of ACC to go over in the early stages of this list. We'll start off with the first one here. So we got the Miami Hurricanes, a record of 15-16 and 16 this past season. They had two down seasons in Coral Gables before their last tournament appearance back in 2018, but the Hurricanes, they should be much improved next season. Five seniors in the roster, they are loaded with guards for this upcoming season with the Canes here. Senior Chris Likes, he'll be an upcoming senior for this Next season, he averaged 15.4 points per game. Also, Cameron McGusty will be a senior. He averaged 12.5 points per game his junior year for the Miami Hurricanes. These two players here, Likes and McGusty, will be the leaders for the seniors, uh, for this upcoming team for seniors here for the Miami Hurricanes. They're also going to get back two guards who will be sophomores for this uh, upcoming season. Isaiah Wong and Harland Beverly, as all four of these names that I just mentioned here, they were all four-star recruits coming out of high schools. The Miami Hurricanes, not only they are loaded with guards, but they also got the size inside. Three senior big men for this upcoming season for the Canes here. Six foot ten, Sam Warnenberg, seven foot center, Ronnie Miller, and also Cincinnati Bearcats transfer, six foot eleven, Nasir Brooks as Brooks average eight points per game in 2018-19 for Cincinnati as not only they get the guards, but they get the size inside. The Hurricanes, they should re really be able to make things interesting in the ACC for next season, along with the next two teams that I'll be mentioning at number 9 and number 8 on the list, as both of these teams are also ACC teams. Moving on to number 9 on the list, we got the Syracuse Orange, finished off this past season with an 18-14 and 14 record. Syracuse, they were a young squad from this past year. They should only continue to get better. As the Orange lose zero players to graduation from this past year, here here is the big question, though, is whether Ford Elijah Hughes, who happened to be the ACC leading scorer with 19 points per game this past year, this is the huge question, is will Elijah Hughes come back for Syracuse for a senior season? If the answer is yes, this team is a tournament team. If he does not come back and goes to the NBA, this team is more like a bubble team here for Syracuse for this next season. But Hughes has already announced that he'll be entering the NBA draft. He's also keeping his options, though. Um, he's keeping his options open to possibly return to Syracuse for next season. Now, Syracuse also 
will be retaining four starters from this past season. The coach's son, Buddy Bayheim, along with Joe Girard, Marek Dolajai, and Barama Sidibe. Three of these players averaged over 10 points per game this past year, with Bayheim averaging 15.3 points per game, Girard averaging just above 12, and Dolajai averaging just above 10. Now, in head coaches Jim Bayheim's 44 seasons at head, at head coach, he has only missed the NCAA tournament eight times, and the only time that he has missed it in consecutive seasons was back in 2007 2008. So, never count out the Syracuse Orange. Even if their leading scorer, Elijah Hughes, does leave to go to the NBA draft, do not count out Syracuse. Now moving on to the third ACC team on the list here. That happens to be the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets. Finished off the season with a 17-14 and record. And they will be overlooked coming into this upcoming season here. Even in a down year to ACC, it's easy to forget how well Georgia Tech did as they finished number five in the conference with nothing to play for. They had no March Madness tournament because they were banned from the 2020 tournament. However, next season, though, they will be eligible for the postseason. It's been a decade. 2010 was the last time that Georgia Tech made the NCAA tournament. The Yellow Jackets, they'll be returning their top five of six leading scorers from this past season. Four of these players will be seniors, while their leading scorer from this past season will be a junior. His name is Michael DeVoe. He averaged 16 points per game this past season for the Yellow Jackets. This team right here with Georgia Tech will be one of the most experienced teams in the nation next year with four seniors and one junior in the projected starting five. The Yellow Jackets got on a roll to close out the season as they won their final six out of the last seven games, including a 64-58 to victory over number five-ranked Louisville at the time. They've got uh, nine losses as well that they suffered by nine points or less for Georgia Tech this past season. So this team right here with the Yellow Jackets, they are definitely capable of flying under the radar, being overlooked next season, and sneaking their way into the bracket. Moving conferences now to the number seven team I have on the list. As that goes out to the Purdue Boilermakers. They finished off this past season with a record of 16-15. and 15. Now, they lost the human bucket in 2019 at the end of the season. Carson Edwards to the Boston Celtics after the 2019 season concluded in their terrific Elite Eight run with Carson Edwards dropping out 42 twice in the tournament in two separate games. Purdue this past year, though, 16-15 and 15, as it was more of a rebuilding season for Matt Painter. The Boilermakers, they struggled to find that consistency, though, up and down season. It included a 14-point loss at um, against Nebraska. And then also, somehow they managed to find a blowout victories, a 29-point win against Michigan State. They crushed Wisconsin, and then they put up in a 100 spot against Iowa. So Purdue here is just struggling with consistency throughout the season. Now, also going to lose 7'3 center Matt Harms as he'll be entering a transfer portal now. Hopefully the Boilermakers, though, uh, however for the Boilermakers, they're going to be able to return their Top two leading scorers in juniors, Travion Williams and Eric Hunter Jr. for next season. Guard Shasa Stefanovic, he should also be able to take the step up here and build off his terrific season. Um, terrific season finale he had, in which he had five made three-point shots against Rutgers in the March 7th season finale. Tallied in a career 22 points for Stefanovic as this team... One of their players that did struggle this past year, his name was Nogel Eastern. He was a four-star recruit back in 2017. He averaged seven and a half points per game his sophomore year, but this past season, down season, only averaged 4.9 points per game his junior season. If Nogel Eastern can get back to his form that he had during sophomore season here, if you can see an uptick, this team's going to be a tough team to beat for next season for Purdue. But head coach Matt Painter is going to look to see if he can put this team back into, t into the tournament for next year as they finished off the record of 16-15 and 15 from this past season. Now moving on to number six on the list. As this one goes out to the UConn Huskies. As they're going to have a new conference to look forward to for next season. As they finished off red hot last five games in a row they won. Finished off with a record of 19-12 and 12 to end American Conference play. UConn, though, first winning season um, since the 2015-16 season, as next year it's going to be entirely different. Moving over to the Big East Conference for the 2020-21 season, Dan Hurley going to look to see if he can get the UConn Huskies back to their tournament form like the Jim Calhoun era back in the day in the 1990s, 2000s, and early 2010s at college basketball and stores. Now, Four of the five starters for UConn, they'll be back for next season. The Huskies, though, they'll be losing their leading scorer, Christian, um, Christian Vital, to graduation. 
third leading scorer, Altari Gilbert, though. He'll be entering the transfer portal as he has announced that he will be transferring over to Wichita State. UConn's second leading scorer, though, will be back. James Booknight, as he was a star during the last nine games, average 17.3 points per game during the final nine games of the season, as he'll be looking to build off a terrific freshman season for Booknight. Sophomore center leading American Athletic Conference shot blocker Cook a Cook will be back as well as he ranked number 12 in blocks per game. He's going to play a massive role inside for this upcoming season for the Huskies. UConn, they're also going to add in a really, really key transfer uh, for next season. And guard RJ Cole, he's a transfer from the Howard Bison. Just phenomenal what he did at Howard his first two seasons. Average 23.7 points per game as a freshman at Howard. 21.4 points per game as a sophomore. Cole now will have to make the jump from the MEAC over to the Big East Conference for the UConn Huskies. It's going to be huge. The, the, um, the development here of two key top 100 recruits and James Booknight and a cook, a cook. These two players will have a huge impact to see if they can get UConn right back to the big dance with a 20-plus win season for the first time since the 2015-16 season. Now moving on to the list here as we get the Arkansas Razorbacks at number five. On the list is this one was a pretty difficult one to gauge for uh, this upcoming season for Arkansas. They finished off with a record of 20, tw um, 20 wins and 12 losses, but this one is tough to predict because we don't really know at this point the future of the two leading guards in this team, Mason, Mason Jones and Isaiah Joe. I had the Razorbacks just out of the bracket with a 20 and 12 record, 7 and 11 with their conference record. So their losing conference record was the reason why I had them out of my bracket to make the 2020 tournament. As they struggled down the stretch, Isaiah Joe was out for basically an entire month for February. Guard Mason Jones, though, he led the SEC with 22 points per game this past season for the Razorbacks. He has declared for the NBA draft. He does have one more season left of eligibility and has until June 3rd to return to Arkansas after going through the draft process if he would like for Mason Jones but even without Jones in the roster this Razorbacks team is still capable to uh, make this next season a good one that's especially there if guard Isaiah Joe does return for his junior season the Razorbacks will be a dangerous team if Joe does come back Arkansas went 19 and 7 this past year with Joe in the lineup but however without him they only had a record of 1 and 5 Next year, the Razorbacks will also add a key transfer to the mix. Guard J.D. Note, a transfer from Jacksonville, averaged 15.5 points per game back in 2018-19. And they're also going to bring along the number six ranked recruiting class for Arkansas. At this time, according to ESPN, it has four four-star freshmen in that recruiting class. So just like his number two, number three, and number four seasons at the Nevada Wolfpack, head coach Eric Musselman Going into his second season here for Arkansas, he has a good chance to bring the Razorbacks back to the NCAA tournament in year two here for Arkansas. Now we'll move on to number four on the list. As we got a mid-major to go over on this one. Dark horse team, in my opinion, that could have made it into the tournament if they had been able to play in their conference tournament if college basketball would have kept on going for the final week. But number four on the list is the St. Louis Billikens, a record of 23-8 and eight from this past season. They went on a red-hot five-game winning streak to close out the season before it ended abruptly. The Billikens, though, they're going to look to take it to the next level for next season, make a run into the tournament here as a sleeper. And I, I honestly thought that this team could have been a dark horse. If they were able to get past Dayton and uh, win against the Flyer, Flyers in the conference tournament, if that matchup had happened, this team could have possibly been a dark horse if they had won the A-10 tournament. But this past season, St. Louis had a matchup to compete with Dayton. Dayton with a 29-2 record. Both of their games, St. Louis lost at home the first time. At the buzzer in overtime, 78-76 to against Dayton. The second time around, they lost 71-65. to Lost by 6, but the score doesn't really indicate how close it was because the free throws went down in the late stages, so that's why Dayton uh, pulled away from them. But the score should have been closer than indicated. But if all goes well for this offseason for the Belkins here, they should be able to retain their top five scores in the roster. Both three-year starters heading into their senior season. Guard Jordan Goodwin and center Hassan French. Both of these players, Goodwin and French, announced that they're going to go through the NBA's pre-draft process. However, both of these players could decide to return back for their senior seasons, which would be huge for St. Louis. It would make St. Louis a dominant force on the boards. Hassan French tallies 16 points and 18 
rebounds in St. Louis's season finale against St. Bonaventure. Hassan French also had a career high. Look at this. 24 rebounds against Belmont back on November 23rd of 2019. Jordan Goodwin, Hassan French, they both led the Atlantic 10 statistically by going number one and number two in the conference, both with 10.4 rebounds per game respectively. This duo right here, they both ended the season with a double-double in points per game and rebounds per game. Good win in French. If both of these players come back, this team's going to be dangerous. Add to the mix here, Javante Perkins, who averaged 20.8 points per game during the last seven games of the season for St. Louis. Also coming back here for next year will be a sophomore, Yuri Collins, as he should be back for his second season. This past year, Yuri Collins led all freshmen in college basketball in assists per game. He averaged five and a half assists per game as a freshman for St. Louis. He had a career high 12 assists versus VCU on February 21st. Another player on this list, as we go to the bench here, making impacts, Gibson Jimerson. Jimerson averaged just over 10 points per game, played in 10 games before, suffering a season-ending foot injury for the Billikens. Also, they get a couple other players on the bench, Terrence Hardgrove Jr., and also second-year player for next year will be 6'10", for Jimmy Bell Jr. He's going to give opponents a lot of problems inside the low post as he should be able to provide a bench spark for the Billikens. Watch out for this team next year to be a huge dark horse in the tournament for sure. Even though Richmond right now is going to, they look like they're going to be able to retain their top five uh, starters in the roster for seniors for next year. Richmond looks like the favorite at the moment. Watch out for the Billikens though, as this team looks like they could be a defensive force in the court. Very tough mentally and physically for next season. Could be a sleeper in the March Madness tournament for sure for next year with the St. Louis Billikens. I've got them at number four. Now moving on to number three in the list. As this one goes out to the Oklahoma State Cowboys. They should be much improved for next year. 18-14 and 14 record during this past season. It's been uh, three straight seasons now. That's if you had counted this uh, past tournament to take place. Three straight seasons with the Cowboys without a March Madness tournament appearance. The Oklahoma State will have a legitimate shot here to get back next season as head coach Michael Boynton will bring back a top 10 recruiting class for next season. It is headlined by one of the best freshmen entering in for next year in college basketball. Senior in high school right now, bringing in the five-star guard, Cade Cunningham, as he will be dangerous. He looks to take this team to a whole new level for next season for Oklahoma State. Also add into the mix, junior guard for next year, Isaac Likely. These two players, Cunningham and Likely, could be the best one-two duo in the conference for the Big 12 and guards in the conference for next season. Also add to the mix, junior center, Yor Ane. He was number four in the Big 12 this past season in blocks per game. Also, Oklahoma State's younger players, Caleb and Keelan, no, Caleb and Keelan Boone looking for a roster spot in the starting lineup. Chris Harris Jr. and Avery Anderson all going in for next season should have a significant impact as they were freshmen playing off the bench should have a much indeed improvement on this team for next season. So the presence of Cade Cunningham will be huge next year along with the experience of likely and a nay in the lineup for the Cowboys towards their success for next season. Now moving on to the list. As we go over number two here, so we're going to keep the co colors to orange now with the Tennessee Vols at number two. Finished off the season with 17-14. and 14. That was their record this past year. Now, this past season was an expected one for Rick Barnes. Rebuilding mode, he had a lot of departures from this roster from the year prior. Grant Williams, Admiral Schofield, and Jordan Bowen, they lost their top three scores from the year prior to end the 2019 season. Jordan Bowden, however, this year is the only player to leave the roster at the moment here for Tennessee. The Vols should be able to return four starters next season, which include these players, Santiago Viscovi, John Fulkerson, Eves Pons, and Josiah Jordan James. As John Fulkerson will look to build off his late season points explosion. He averaged 20.8 points per game during the final four games of the season. That included a career high 27 points against Kentucky. The SEC shot blocking leader will be back once again. Eves Pons for the Vols. And also add in that experience with the number four recruiting class coming in right now, according to ESPN. And Tennessee should be able to be back into the tournament. The Vols will add in two key freshmen here, five-star guards, and Jaden Springer and Keon Thompson. They're also going to add in a key transfer over from the Oregon Ducks, Victor Bailey Jr. For, next, 
for this next season for Tennessee. This team is going to be deep here with Rick Barnes. He's going to have a lot of pieces that he's able to move around and look forward to for next year. This team looking like they can compete at the top of the SEC with Kentucky for next year. And now we will move on to the number one team on the list here. For the top 10 college basketball teams most likely to return back to the 2021 NCAA tournament after a down season goes to this one in the North Carolina Tar Heels. A disappointing season, which Roy Williams had his 17th year as head coach. Worst season for Roy Williams in his college basketball head coaching career. But UNC should be much improved for next year. Should be able to get back to top 25 form for sure, in my opinion. North Carolina finished this past year with a 14-19 and record. It was their worst season since the 2001-2002 season in which the Tar Heels finished with a record of 8-20. and Cole Anthony, he delayed his draft announcement two weeks ago on whether he's going to return pro or return back to North Carolina to play another season. Now, I expect Cole Anthony to fully go to the NBA draft here. I'd be shocked if he actually returns for a sophomore season at UNC. But either way, North Carolina will be having the number three recruiting class at this time, according to ESPN, coming into town for next season. They're going to add in three five-star recruits at the moment and point guard Caleb Caleb Love, two bigs that they're going to get in Dayron Sharp and Walker Kessler. Add in also two other big players in the roster here, Garrison Brooks, as he should be able to make a huge impact next season for the Tar Heels as he looks to be back as he averaged 16.8 points per game and 8.5 and rebounds per game this past season for UNC. And also Armando Baycott, he should be much improved for his sophomore, se uh, sophomore season here for North Carolina, should be able to continue to improve. As the sides right there are Baycott and Brooks, that's going to be tough to compete on the boards as you add in the two freshman centers and Dayron Sharp and Walker Kessler. This is going to be a tough, tough team to keep up to on the rebounding advantage there on the boards. Add in guards Leaky Black and Anthony Harris, and these two players also should be able to take the steps up to improve next season in Chapel Hill. North Carolina, they should be able to get back to how they've been in the past, challenging Duke, also challenging Virginia next season for the ACC title. So, that is a wrap here, my video. Thanks, thank you, everybody, so much for watching. As that is the top 10 college basketball teams that are most likely to return to the 2021 NCAA tournament if the 2020 NCAA tournament had actually happened here. All these teams were either on the outside of the bracket looking in if the season had frozen or they had already lost in their conference tournament as that uh, the season was stopped there in March about a month ago from when I'm recording this video right now but don't forget to like share comment and subscribe to my channel also let me know down in the comment section below if you have any other teams that you think that I may have missed on this list thanks so much for watching everyone as this is behind the arc basketball on YouTube